Today I want to talk to you about how I talk to the kids in the back of my classroom. I love the beginning of the school year when the kids thought to see what the kids were really thinking about themselves in math. I didn't do some pre-assessment that would have been way too easy. Instead, I stood at the door and observed where they sat when they walked in the room. I like to call this the seat assessment. See what the seat assessment told me was how comfortable they felt that, that they would that they were going to be with algebra or geometry or algebra two. Because the ones who thought they would be terrible, who had really big issues with, with math, often sat at the back and everyone else sat towards the front and the ones that were kind of halfway sat in the middle. I learned this from my mother who taught me growing up that where you sit speaks to what you think. And that has always been true in my math classroom. Much like the self-segregation of our high school, students did sometimes sit according to race, gender, or privilege at times. But when given the choice, especially in this day and age, they most often chose to sit according to their perceived mathematical ability. It goes without saying that I think therefore I am most definitely applied. They thought they were horrible at math, therefore they tried to sit as far away from the learning as possible. Little did they know that that was not even the case. So I'll just admit right now that this is not from some great mathematical data collection. This is really from my observations of my classroom, the feedback from my students, and also just simple verbal, visual, and active proof. I would listen as kids would walk in and say things like, man, I'm sitting in the back. It would great when they said that. I would just kind of laugh and giggle inside because that was never really the case. Because every space in my room was a space for prime learning. Every single corner, all, every square, inch, centimeter, meter, however you measured it, it was all a space for prime learning. I love when they would wait for me to actually write down problems for them and work them out step by step because I never did that. I think that's what they thought my smart board was for. Clearly it was not because we, we that's not the way we rolled in our math class. They also thought that they could sit in the back away from the prying eyes of a teacher who would not bother them when they wanted to sleep or do other things. But I love these kids too much to allow them to even sit there and for that to happen. We learned together and this was pretty much as secure as it got. Collaboration was never easy. No, not at all. I didn't say impossible, but it most definitely wasn't easy. But the seat assessment also didn't apply because they learned that they could work together in any space and everything would be okay. Technology had a place definitely in my classroom because it enabled me to be any place in the room and facilitate, or if I need to directly teach a formula or a concept, I could do that from any place in the classroom. It's awesome. But the corner-to-corner -corner engagement provided through the quick assessments from their cell phones or even from the creativity kept the crotch texting from happening as much as the learning that was enabled through the device itself. But the greatest moments were when I would have the kids collaborate and eventually they would leave their self-selected areas and meet someplace with kids that were in the front or the middle or the side or what they thought was the back. I don't know. But those were the moments that really mattered when the desk location didn't. That's an edge you win. It's called confidence-driven collaboration. The kids believed they could, therefore there was no fear of thinking that they could not. I love when they would say things like, Miss, your class is different, or Miss, you didn't give all the steps for us to write and then just do. Absolutely not. That's what it was their learning environment. It was important for me to make sure that their learning environment adhered to that. But my favorite was, and still is, Miss, I would have asked you, but all you would have done is turned around and asked me a question, so I did it myself. Most certainly. You want them to learn to be self-reflective. And if you can get that from the kid that thinks they're in the back, you've done your job. Mid-year, here's the fun part, when the new kids would come in and they would sit and declare, I'm sitting in the back of the room. <sighs> but that was just, painfully amazing when a kid that was already there would turn and look and say good luck with that thank you for your time